Okay, our last problem, problem five, is a problem that concerns a textile firm, uh, Pry Textiles, uh, that sells towels, towels in a perfectly competitive market. They hire workers in a perfectly competitive labor market, and we're going to assume that the wage, the market wage rate for workers is $80 per day. So the first thing we want to do is we want to state the conditions necessary for hiring the profit maximizing amount of labor. And when you think about that, it's just simply they're asking you to say, you know, what does the marginal revenue product of, of the last person they hire need to equal? So the marginal revenue product, which is the price times the marginal physical product, how many towels that last worker is able to produce times the price is the marginal revenue product. In order to be at a profit maxim maximizing point, the marginal revenue product of the last worker that it's hired should equal the marginal factor cost or the wage rate, which in this case is $80 per day. So... <clears throat> The next thing we need to do is um, calculate the price of a towel uh, at, the, at the profit maximizing level of output when the marginal product, the marginal physical product of the last worker hired is 20 towels per day. So if marginal factor cost needs to equal marginal revenue product at the profit maxim maximizing level, then the price that they get for the 20 towels needs to equal the wage rate of that last worker, which is $80 per day. <clears throat> so you just simply need to do the math and see what the price of 20 towels needs to be in order for it to equal $80 a day. Pretty easy. Okay. Now, part C, we want to draw a correctly labeled graph of the labor supply and demand curves for the firm, for the Pride Textiles firm, and show the equilibrium amount of labor hired. Now, remember when we're talking about the wage, the the wage is set by the market, and so the wage rate is going to be a horizontal line that is also the firm's supply curve for labor. So our graph should look something like this. Ta-da! Okay, so we, we want to make sure that we have this, uh, you know, have your uh, horizontal uh, wage, which is also the marginal factor cost, which is also the supply of labor curve for the firm, for the firm, right? And then you want to have a downward sloping marginal revenue product curve, which also equals the demand for labor. So I could put here, I could actually chain, add this. Let me just scoot this over, make a little uh, addition here real quick. And do, do, let's see, do that, right? Okay. So this is the actual demand for labor, the marginal revenue product of, of the firm, and it's downward uh, sloping. So they're going to hire. So as we come down this uh, demand curve, they're hiring a quantity of uh, workers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So whatever the last... The last worker here that is hired, that worker at that quantity of labor, that last hire, his or her marginal revenue product is going to be $80. And if we uh, think back on a problem, that last worker is going to be able to produce 20 towels a day. And... And uh, uh, remember, a marginal a revenue a product is marginal physical a product, which in this case is uh, is 20 times price, which should be 80, right? So 
there's no uh, a mystery here that the, the price of uh, towels should be four dollars each, right? <laughs> okay. What else do we need to do here? So we've done that. Now we need to look at uh, the last part, which is giving your answer to part B. In other words, once you know what the price of towels are, what if the price of towels towels increases? We want to explain how Pride's, the firm's Pride Textiles profit maximizing quantity of labor will be affected. Now think about that. If the price goes up, and marginal revenue product equals marginal physical product times price. That means with a higher a price that at every at every quantity of labor you're going to have a higher marginal revenue product because you're multiplying it by a higher price. So, so that's going to shift our labor or demand curve for the firm, or we can also say the, the marginal revenue product curve for the firm out and to the right. So it's going to look like this. Now, remember, the wage rate is set by the market. So the wages are not going to change. And I had a, there it is. Okay, so what's going to happen at this point the marginal revenue product of the last worker hired is no longer equal to the wage the wage rate. Now, it's actually, uh, let me just put one more line in here so you can see. Now it's actually higher, right? It's actually uh, the marginal revenue product at this, at the original quantity of labor is higher than the wage rate. So what's going to happen is we're going to, since the wage rates can't change, what the, the firm can do is hire more workers. So we end up about right here. So we end up with a higher quantity of workers hired because they're more productive. They're actually not more productive, but because the, 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 the price is higher, the marginal revenue product is higher. They're still producing the same amount of uh, towels, but they're getting... Uh, more uh, revenue coming into the firm per towel. So, so we can hire more workers at the same wage and find our new equilibrium right here where marginal revenue a product equals marginal factor cost or the wage rate. So we're going to hire more workers. The uh, uh, quantity of uh, labor or demand is going to go up and the wage is going to stay the same. And it's important, probably important to just state here that if we if we remained at our original, whoa, let me go back. If we if we remained at our original level of uh, labor, then our uh, And, and we're here, then our marginal revenue uh, product would actually be greater than than the wage rate, and we don't we don't want that. We we want them to be equal. That's why we move. Uh, I can grab this guy, put him back. That's that's why we move to a higher quantity of uh, labor, so so that we can. Uh, find our new equilibrium. Okay, that's problem five. Uh, all of these are, are going to help you on on uh, the uh, quiz, so make sure you really understand these uh, graphs and have a clear understanding of um, you know the uh, relationships between uh, the variables, and I think you will do very well on the quiz.